Britain is a hotel nation with over half a million hotel rooms. But there's a problem. Far too many British hotels aren't up to scratch. Eminent hotelier Ruth Watson has been in the business for over 25 years and she's helping six new hoteliers get it right before the rot sets in. If I can offer advice to first-time hoteliers right from the outset, then I think I can stop them making catastrophic mistakes. She's taking them from initial concept to building and design work and sending them behind the scenes at Britain's top hotels. This time it's Franco and Leffi Anacreonte in Luton. What the hell do you know about running a hotel? Absolutely well. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> They're bloody white. You can't just... afford that degree of luxury in size. I don't think she had a clue about what she was talking about. It's so unprofessional. It is so unprofessional. I look like a real idiot <laughs> now. But does this couple have what it takes to open the top hotel in town? Do I think you will make good hoteliers? Luton, 32 miles north of London, home to nearly 200,000 people, but also a massive hub for business and travel. Its international airport services 10 million people each year. There are already scores of large hotels in the area. The market is dominated by chains, and it's hard for newcomers to break into. But that hasn't stopped property developer Franco Anacreonte and his barrister wife, Leffi's ambition, to take on the big boys with a hotel of their own. We are risking everything. It's the worst recession going back to the depression of the 20s. Friends of ours have literally knocked on our door and said, don't do it. These two imposing 80s office blocks used to be home to an insurance firm and Luton Chamber of Commerce, but have now been vacant for two years. Franco and Leffi think that Luton deserves a stylish but affordable hotel. But they have no experience in the industry whatsoever. Our vision for the hotel is very design-led, very, the term is boutique, completely different to any other hotel that I know of uh, in Luton. Leffi plans to work with a professional designer and oversee the look of the interiors. She'll do this part-time alongside her job as a criminal defence barrister. In four months, Franco wants to open his hotel, to be called Icon. His team of builders must link the two buildings together and divide the floors into 68 bedrooms. But already their £700,000 renovation budget has doubled and the hotel still looks like a building site. We have put everything we've got into this venture and if it fails, we will fail. We will fail and I don't know where we'll end up. For Franco, failure is not an option. He's prepared for the struggle ahead and determined to make it a success. We will push and push and push and fight and scrape and scream until it happens. It's February, four months before their July opening. At this critical point, award-winning hotelier Ruth Watson steps in to offer some much-needed advice. Behind me are the two 80s office blocks that Franco wants to make into a hotel. It's an enormous, expensive project. The buildings themselves are really hideous. They've got horrible windows, and somehow he's got to link them. To get to it, I'm going to have to go down into an underpass that doesn't fill me with much joy. This office block is separated from the city by a dual carriageway and is right next to a rival budget hotel. But on the plus side, it's only 10 minutes from the airport and a new independent hotel could be welcomed in an area dominated by chains. Did you really look at this expletive deleted building <laughs> and say, this is my dream hotel? Yes, I did. I was born in Luton, so it's been here almost as long as I have. It came up and bang, straight in there. Why do you think Luton needs another hotel? I mean, there's an awful lot of concrete boxes as it is. Uh, it wasn't something that we've jumped into 
having done an awful amount of homework. It's something I've always wanted to do. Uh... Levy, your career is very different from this. So different and so frightening. I mean, I appear at the Old Bailey and I do murder cases and robbery cases, but I find this absolutely terrifying. Franco has been property developing since he was 17, but this project is bigger than anything he's ever attempted before. I thought to design and build a hotel would have been broadly in line with building a three-bedroom house, and I could not have been any further from the reality of that. Franco and Leffy have risked millions on this massive gamble in the sharpest economic downturn for decades. What did you pay for the building itself? 1.325. Right, do you now feel you've overpaid in retrospect? No, I felt that that sort of money for this building, I honestly felt they were giving it away. And how much at first had you budgeted for the renovation and to create a hotel? <laughs> About 700,000. <laughs> and what are we looking at now? About 1.5 million. Shit. Have you actually got that money? No, I'm short. No. I'm short about £600,000. As we speak today, I'm short. Sure, yeah. Financially, it's an enormous burden. Uh, certainly, we've never been so exposed in our 23 years of doing Working business. Life, yeah. They are scheduled to open in four months' time when they have to start their £10,000 a month loan repayments but they still haven't joined the two buildings together to make it into one hotel. And I'm hoping it's not a case of never the twain shall meet. You must have some idea about what you're going to do. Yes, we've, uh, we've got full planning permission, building regulations, to link the two buildings together. The project is to convert nearly 20,000 square feet of office space into 68 bedrooms and charge around 70 pounds a night. One building has five floors, the other has three. Franco plans to link the two. The three-storey block is mainly bedrooms. But in the ground floor of the other block, Franco wants to squeeze in a conference room, reception, bar, kitchen, lounge and restaurant. What's happening in this area? We're looking to dedicate this area solely to um, the reception, the kitchen will be in that corner over there, and the dining area uh, and easy, easy lounge area will be here as well. i tell you what I've got that major problem about, this room. I don't think it's anything like big enough, big enough. for what you want I to know. do. I would say that a traditional reception for a 70-bedroom hotel is probably getting on for half this space anyway. Ruth's concerned that Franco and Leffy have underestimated the amount of room needed for reception and dining. City centre hotels have a higher proportion of business guests who tend to arrive and depart at the same time, so the receptions are bigger. The restaurants must also cope with a breakfast bottleneck. Therefore, it has to accommodate a full house in one sitting. Getting the fundamentals wrong at the building stage could spell disaster when this hotel finally opens. She's just hit us with this bombshell and uh, I need to think about that. Um, it will be remedied one way or another. But for Ruth, the most worrying aspect is what role these amateurs, Franco and Leffy, will take once they open for business. The icon, when it opens, could see well over 18,000 visitors a year. But Franco and Leffy want to run it and its 20-plus staff themselves. What the hell do you know about running a hotel? Absolutely well. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I then ask the question, is it right for you to be here? Although our classification, if you like, is general manager, it's not really general manager because we don't have the experience. But I, for example, will be here seven days a week, however many hours. The role of a general manager embraces so many areas that you have no idea about, not least that he helps the owner know what they're doing and also make sure that the staff are knowing what they're doing. And what I would suggest if you're hoping to open in about four months, you should be employing a really, really good experienced GM. They are 
so sweet. I mean, I have no doubts whatsoever their hearts are really in the right place and that they're dedicated to this project. Unfortunately, they know absolutely zilch about running a hotel. But on such a big project, the fight to meet deadlines is exhausting Franco. I just had a panic attack, shortness of breath and couldn't breathe. And Ruth pulls no punches when it comes to Leffy's bedroom design. I'm going to be really rude here. It really looks to me like a very expensive Greek restaurant. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Franco and Leffy's plans for the best hotel in Luton have run into trouble. But seasoned hotelier Ruth Watson is on hand to steer them out of danger. She's advised them to completely remodel the ground floor to allow more space for reception and dining. More pressingly, with only a few months before they're due to open, they urgently need to hire an experienced general manager so they don't make more rookie mistakes. I don't think that Franco and Leffy have any idea just how complicated running a hotel can be, and I'm sure they don't know what a general manager really does. So I'm sending them off to one of London's most prestigious hotels, where they can find out for themselves just how broad a spectrum of skills a hotel manager needs. The Hilton Park Lane is the flagship of the Hilton Empire. It has 453 rooms, and sees 300,000 visitors a year, including heads of state and even royalty. They pride themselves on their friendly, professional service. Franco and Leffy's first task is to provide the welcome to the hundreds of people through the doors. The most important thing for guests when they arrive at a hotel is the welcome, because they will remember that. Whatever you do, they will copy. Be happy, smile, be confident. Now, in our business, we never use the pointed finger. We always use an open palm. So you demonstrate this way, and you walk two or three paces with them. Property developer Franco has never worked front of house before. Welcome to the Hilton. <laughs> there you go. No, fine, fine. There you go. Walk up to her. Come on, just go to her. Good evening, madam. Welcome to the Hilton. Can I guide you, sir? Do you know where you're yeah, going? Yeah, we've been in. Okay, Thank lovely. You. Good evening. Going? Yeah, are you going to my okay, room? Okay, lovely. Thank you. Through the elevator. Do you need any guidance anywhere, madam? Barrister Leffy seems to be enjoying her new role, but Franco needs a pep talk. You're right. <laughs> Feel confidence, chest out, big smile, and engage. Can I help you anywhere with some directions? Uh, that's on the first floor. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the London Hilton. Hello. Would you like some guidance? You're here for the money awards? Yeah, I am. Uh, feel a bit like a parrot, a bit monotonous. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the London Hilton. Allow me to show you the way. Follow me. I think they're growing in confidence, and I think they're doing a very good job. I even see that Franco is now taking pictures <laughs> you ready? of arriving guests. Oh, one more. What a memory. A thousand suits later and a few tourist photos, and Franco has seen the benefit of a warm welcome. All the money in the world can build something like this. So this is 100 million, 200 million pounds worth of hotel and they only need to be greeted the wrong way once, and that 200 million is it's worth nothing. A large source of revenue for city centre hotels is hosting conferences and events. Franco and Leffy are setting up one of the 13 meeting rooms. I'm sure you should have more staff doing this. He said three tables. I disagree with it. I don't think this is right. Oh, you don't take it so seriously. Relax. You know what? It's not right what he's done. We'll do it our way. With so much still to do on the shift, Franco is feeling the pressure. And Leffy's laid-back approach isn't helping. Leff, please, can we just... <laughs> the most critical thing is that you get all the preparation right. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. That needs to be on the left, doesn't it? You've done it on the right. Does it matter? Well, yeah. I'm moving them and you're moving them back again. <laughs> After 45 minutes, the conferences manager arrives for a spot check. Are you left-handed, either of you? This is all perfect. Yeah, you did say. The waters should be like that. Yeah. It's that sort of thing that makes the difference between the customers, clients, coming back to us, booking another ten meetings next year, or going to the competition. 
But their shift doesn't end there. To get a full picture of hotel life, it's up to the 28th floor to the famous cocktail bar for a crash course in martini mixing and waitressing. It's made me feel today how there's so much that we don't know. We are really inexperienced. Yeah. And we really, really need to find a really good general manager. It's three months to the Icon's grand opening in July. Franco had needed to raise £600,000, and the funds have come through from the bank. But this means he's heavily in debt, and the pressure is on to finish. It's starting to look a lot more like a hotel. Very happy that it's progressing on schedule. Uh, not on budget, but on schedule. Following Ruth's advice, Franco has moved the conference room into his other building and put the kitchen in its place. This allows much more space for his possible 130 guests to check in and eat. All these changes take time, but Franco is determined to open by July the 1st, when his £10,000 a month repayments to the bank start. The contractors said to me, when are you looking to open? And I said, July, and everyone says the same thing. What, July of next year? And, it, it, and it's dealing with that negativity that I, I, I just sort of have to put everyone in their place straight away and say, no, uh, it's July of this year and we are going to make it and we're going to soft open on the first. And, you know, and, and, and it's mental strength that I, I, I need to have as well as physical strength. Design and layout is tricky when building a city centre hotel, as bedrooms tend to be smaller. The Icon Hotel will have 68 bedrooms. Ruth wants to see if they are able to balance practicality and aesthetics with limited floor space. Are you going to show me how big these rooms are? Absolutely. Franco and Leffy plan to divide this floor space into 12 rooms, all with ensuite. You've had some say in how the bathrooms well, are going to be. That's right. Originally, there weren't going to be that many bathtubs. It was going to be mostly showers, mm. and I felt that wasn't going to be adequate. Franco and Leffy are following the convention by having a small room with five-foot beds and an internal bathroom. But Leffy wants some added extras to make this feel more luxurious. Most rooms will have baths instead of the standard shower cubicle. But this squeezes the space in the bedroom. She's also chosen built-in wardrobes and bespoke solid wood furniture. But their ambition may be greater than the space they have. Can we do something a bit bold and brave? Because this looks like a bedside table. Yeah. Is this what you have in mind? Yes. And this is very heavy. Ah! What is it made out of? <laughs> solid gold? This is very heavy. We are currently... They're bloody wide! They are wide. They are. We have not chosen side. this yet. You can't this is afford just... that degree of luxury in size. I'm telling you here and now, that is, it's unnecessarily wide. Yeah. Can you afford to have all your furniture made of solid wood? Um, well, we've budgeted for a, a good quality wood. Um, bedroom. Where Franco and Leffy might come a cropper on this project is by projecting their domestic ideas about design onto the hotel rooms. They do need to consider how those rooms will play out in a public environment because it's not the same as what you would do at home. It's May and the partitions have gone up so the rooms are slowly taking shape but they're slipping behind schedule. The monthly £10,000 interest payments start on July the 1st. Franco had hoped to pay for them with profit from his hotel, but this is looking less and less likely. Despite all this pressure, Leffy remains enthusiastic. She's pleased with the fabrics and colours she's chosen, working alongside professional designers. The moment you walk into our hotel, you will know exactly that you have arrived. This is the porcelain. We flew all the way to southern Italy. It's very hard wearing, this, this porcelain tile. The red on its own, it's lovely, but, you know, not great. Put the gold together and it is striking and stunning. This is the carpet which we have now chosen. This is all bespoke. And now there's a big debate going on between me and Franco at the moment, um, because Franco's obviously watching the cost of everything. Um, and I'm more choosing what I like and what I don't like, and I should be watching the cost as well. 
he doesn't want wallpaper in the bedrooms. Um, he's saying that it will still look just as boutique and still just as lovely without the wallpaper. Despite their ballooning budget, Leffy doesn't want to scrimp on quality design. I've got a feeling that wallpaper will be up on opening day. They've taken Ruth's advice and are interviewing potential candidates for the role of general manager. But with no experience of the industry, it's not easy. Do you see a general manager as a higher position than a food and beverage manager? Definitely. That may have been a really silly question. The 16-hour days and endless worry about deadlines are starting to take their toll. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. It's taken up my whole life. The pressure is mounting up now. My phone rings 50, 60 times a day. The second time it rang this morning, uh, I just had a panic attack. Shortness of breath and couldn't breathe. I felt like I was having a heart attack. So I've never had sensations like that before because I can generally deal with nearly most things that are thrown at me. Converting an existing building into a hotel can be troublesome, particularly if it was never originally designed to be slept in. I really want Franco and Leffy to succeed because they work so hard. But when you're designing a hotel, you really need to get things right. And looking at these latest plans, there are still some really big problem areas. Ruth decides to tackle the issue head on with Franco. Just over two months, I think, since I last saw you, and all my experience tells me you're going to be behind schedule. Are you? We are... It looks like we're running about three weeks behind schedule at the moment. The icon is due to open in two months, but with the extensive structural changes, it looks more like a building site now than on Ruth's last visit. In terms of deliveries... All the deliveries will be through the car park But not the just rear. through that narrow gap there. Is this building coming down? Uh, no, no, that's the gap. It's, it's, it, it's over a metre. Ruth is concerned that there is only a narrow corridor for deliveries to go in and waste to come out. This all happens near the entrance at the back of the hotel, which could cause congestion, as well as giving a poor first impression for guests. What's more, one of the bulkiest deliveries, laundry, would have to navigate this cramped alley. Then its only route to the rooms is through the middle of the restaurant. What about laundry as well? Because that's incredibly bulky. Once the cages with the laundry go into that area, there's a holding area. Yeah. And then from there, we will distribute the laundry to wherever we need to. Are they going to have to walk outside? No, no, it's all internal. So all... They, they can... through the restaurant? Uh, <laughs> I look like a real idiot now. What normally happens is you have a holding bay, normally on each floor, um, a linen cupboard or room. Now, what you don't want is to have the entire morning spent with your staff walking through with either clean or dirty laundry. There are still so many basic, fundamental, structural things that are not being addressed at this very important stage regarding things like deliveries, laundry coming in and out, where the kitchen access is. So many things need to be pinned down right now. Oh! You've got a sucking great hole. <laughs> Ruth's interested to see if they followed her advice. The kitchen's now going to be there, mm. so that has gained you almost Ooh. double the space, hasn't yes. it? It has. What about the room designs, Leffy? That was going to be in your More, gift, I think. That's right. We've actually chosen some lovely porcelain tiles from Italy. So you're going to have somebody permanently on duty washing the floor, are you? We thought it was easy to clean. Every single boot mark on a rainy day, it's going to end up looking like rubbish in two seconds. Yes, it's got to be cleanable, easily cleanable. It also doesn't want to be slipping. I'm worried in the rain you're going to end up with that awful thing you see in so many hotels where they have to throw down those sort of fabric-y little rugs with the rubber edging around them in order to make safe passage. Leffy will have to rethink the practicality of design downstairs, but hopes to impress Ruth with the bedroom interiors. OK. They are small, but I don't have a problem with that. Leffy's brought a short list of her favourite fabrics. We're thinking of white duvet on the bed with a duvet cover. We're thinking of a throw in this kind of colour. What, what's the carpet going to be The like? carpet's like a cream, 
Cream. Cream. No, it's not cream. cream. It's Don't not tell cream. me cream. cream Don't say it's... cream. Please stop saying cream. It's um, it's a very light brown, isn't it? Okay, light brown yeah. as a paint. Plain. Okay. No, plain? no, 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 not plain. It's got um. It's got it's got, it's got lots of specks in it and specks. For, for the dirt. I do think that you've got a great deal of very heavy, very rich colours here. That the textures are all slightly shiny or velvety. I'm going to be really rude here. You are looking at very, very rich colours, which really looks to me like a very expensive Greek restaurant. I totally disagree with Ruth. What is important when I personally walk into a hotel room is not the wallpaper, I'm sorry, it's the bed and it's the fabrics. In all honesty, I don't think she had a clue about what she was talking about. Whether Franco Oleffi like it or not, this hotel is for business people, it's in the centre of Luton, it is never going to be beautiful. So you have to cater for that kind of clientele. However much you want your own taste to intrude, it mustn't be to a point where it actually repels your clientele. With such a tight deadline, Franco's about to receive some unwelcome news. We're not going to hit the 1st of July. Any more bad news? And with the hotel's future in jeopardy, Leffy's not giving up without a fight. I will sue you for the time that the hotel should have opened and all the loss of income. Franco and Leffy want to open Luton's premier hotel in just two months' time. But hotelier Ruth Watson is concerned that these novices could come a cropper in wanting to impose their personal design on the hotel. There's no reason why a city centre hotel shouldn't have a strong design ethos, but it shouldn't be something that actually alienates the guests. I'm sending Franco and Leffy off to a London hotel where they combine practical decor with a really modern, funky twist. The Bermondsey Square Hotel is one of London's newest and costs £13 million to build. The public areas are bright, welcoming and full of character. The design here is a, uh, a nod to the 60s. With everything that we've done, we've injected a little bit of sense of humour. It's a great venue. It's very in line with uh, the seed that was in my mind that I wanted to create. Good experience. We just haven't got their money, have we? <laughs> the 79 guest bedrooms use some rich colours and fabrics, but sparingly against neutral backgrounds and clean lines. I've noticed you don't have wardrobe, but you've got the hanging space. Is that because it's more short stay? We would expect a, an average of one, one and a half nights here. But Franco and Leffy think that the icon can offer more. They're all beautiful in this hotel, but I just feel that we've given so much more individual attention to all the different types of fabrics. Our furniture is solid wood. Here it's laminated. Um, and there's a big difference in cost. That, to me, is boutique. Designers have really thought how business travellers will use this room and placed the desk overlooking the bed, not facing towards the wall. I think you've created much more space than you would have had if it had gone against the wall. I've never seen a room designed like this and um, it's interesting. With his deadline looming, Franco realises how far away he is from the finishing line. I got on a real downer because I just thought there's so much work that's still to do and, um, and, and, you know, and there is so much to go into. There's so much thought that goes into absolutely everything. Franco and Leffy are due to open in only eight weeks and Ruth is worried they still have no general manager in place. She's bringing in three applicants to get the ball rolling in their recruitment drive. We're interviewing some general managers, or rather you are, I'm just observing, and this is really, really crucial. This person should, if they know their craft, be able to immediately put you on the straight and narrow. I mean, this GM can really make or break you. A general manager, or GM, is the most senior member of staff in the hotel and can earn up to £90,000 a year. They will oversee every department, from kitchen to housekeeping, accounts to concierge. Staffing issues is another responsibility, as well as customer complaints. In the case of a new build, like at Luton, a GM should ideally start in the job a good three months before the hotel even opens. 
Franco and Leffy are keen to show the first applicant their new hotel. That part of the L will be the reception, yeah. and here will be the bar. OK. But the sales pitch is rather one-sided. The ethos is to have a four-star standard hotel yeah. in terms of decor. Mm. The bed's 1,500 wide by two metres deep, so that's a five-foot bed, I think, isn't yeah. it, Ruth? Yeah. Five foot. Franco and Leffy's inexperience is alarming, Ruth. You're not being anything like testing enough. Can you tell from that guy now whether he actually could no. do the no, job or not? No, absolutely no. not. No. Franco and Leffy have no time to waste. Ruth hopes they will be more probing with applicant number two when it comes to their plans about the restaurant. Think you can squeeze 150 in here? You're going to be looking about 120, I think. Have you ever been in a situation like this? Not as bad as this. <laughs> no. I really feel we need somebody that can guide us. The final candidate has nearly 20 years' experience. So what will he think of their plans? First impressions? Same size as a, as a budget hotel size bedroom. In terms of staffing, we are due to open the hotel on the 1st of July. Did you say the 1st of July? Mm. Yeah, I'd have probably wanted to have got a lot of those in place already. Meeting these potential GMs has been a wake-up call for Franco and Leffy. We've cleaned a lot of information from these interviews, actually, but the real strongest point is that everyone feels they should have been employed six to eight weeks ago. Mm. And so this, I think, has to be your real mission. You need to get the general manager on board now. Although they haven't found their ideal general manager today, these interviews have highlighted how quickly they need to employ one. Time is so against them, and the idea of them being genuinely open on the 1st of July is, I think, a pipe dream. What I would like to say is that I am really admiring of how much you're putting into this. You know, the money, the effort, the... You, you know, you're focused really on trying to provide a really good product. I hope your health will <laughs> keep up during this very difficult period, because I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. Mm. I really do. Four weeks and almost 30 candidates later, and Franco finally finds his perfect GM. Lorraine made it to the last three of 27, 28 GMs that were interviewed. It's an enormous relief that a GM's on board to take um, the workload off of me now. But there's a problem on site. The builders have struck granite, where they expected to find concrete. This harder material will take longer to dig up and further delay their opening deadline, a month away. Franco needs to open this hotel in July, when the repayments start on his massive £1.5 million loan. It's June the 2nd, and the contractors have summoned a crisis meeting. Obviously, we've had a few delays. There's also been an amazing amount of additional work we're not going to hit the 1st of July. It's gut-wrenching for many reasons that we're behind schedule. You know, the biggest one is, is financial. Um, every week, the interest is phenomenal. So I really wanted to open on the 1st of July. Priority is to open the hotel. Have I now got a new deadline to work to? I mean, before we were working to the end of June. Would you rather I worked out a programme and see where that takes us, or do you want me to...? All right, OK. I'd like to open the hotel open for the 14th of August. It's running out of time. Anybody got any more questions? Any more bad news? OK. For super-ambitious Franco, the loss of control is having serious repercussions. The stress is starting to take its toll now. Um, suffered two panic attacks so far when the realisation hit that we weren't going to hit the 1st of July. The sleep is getting worse. I keep telling myself it's the last final couple of months, that last push, and we're at the end, you know, and that's what I keep telling myself. Converting an existing building into a hotel is trickier to pull off than constructing one from scratch. Successful examples that Franco could learn from include the Scotsman Hotel in Edinburgh, which used to be home to newspaper offices and was never designed for people to stay in overnight. 
The Malmaison in Oxford manages a luxury finish in a former jail. They've kept some original features, but have made staying here an entirely different experience than its intended purpose. And the lighthouse, built a century ago near Llandudno, was a cold fortress. Now it is a warm and inviting 34-bedroom hotel. Back in Luton, and Franco's August deadline has been and gone. It's September, and only now has the decoration started. It's nice now to walk on to the site, and it's a lot less like a site now, and a lot more like a hotel. It's a race to get open, but for Franco, this final stretch is gruelling. I have found the last two months extremely depressing, very frustrating, and the site has dragged and, you know, it, it, it's been very slow. And workaholic Franco has questions about other people's commitment. I have been requesting, especially the last two months, for the contractors to work the weekends and evenings, and none of them have been prepared to do that. What about Saturday? Some love Saturday. Sunday? No. <laughs> Despite the problems, there's a press party planned for October the 1st, by which time the reception and restaurant areas should be completed. But the delays mean he's had to refinance the project for a third time. Once they've finished, Franco and Leffy's original budget of £2 million will have doubled. I've now been developing for 23 years, and this is the toughest I have ever known it in those 23 years. Leffie's disappointed with the work of her interior designers, so she's taken complete control of the job herself. This means she's had to put her barristerial work on hold, so she can help Franco full-time. I think people haven't really understood how grand and luxurious we want the building to be. So the fireplace will go here with the thrones, and then on this side of the room, we're having a huge mirror made with two huge thrones in the crushed velvet. One's going to be Bordeaux and the other one's gold. When you walk in, you're going to think, wow, I've arrived. We want to be bespoke. We want to be far more upmarket, far more luxurious. Leffy's aspiring to be a hotelier in Knightsbridge, I think. Leffy won't accept second best. And despite the imminent press party, she has rejected the original choice for the restaurant chairs after seeing a mock-up. I saw the fabric on the chair. My heart melted. I thought it looked absolutely awful because I envisage our guests walking into this room, the place to be in Luton, and thinking, wow, my God, I want it to be in their face. I want them to walk in, look at the chairs. I know it's only a chair, but I want them to think, wow, where am I? God, we've got, we've got to come back here next week or the week after. So I have completely scrapped that chair as late as last week. And instead, I've gone for something completely different. Intent on a dramatic look, they have chosen silver ceramic floor tiles instead of porcelain and feature lighting for a touch of sparkle. Key staff members have started work, a chef and a restaurant manager. Now they can work on marketing and finalise their menus for the Capello's restaurant. What do you think of that? It's fantastic. It's great, it's isn't so, it? so, so great. Yeah. It looks lovely. Lorraine, if you look at that, those oh, words it's... needs to wrap round the, the shape of the hat. Can you see that? Okay. And I think that will work better. But the design changes are pushing the budget to the limit, and they are a million and a half overspent. It's all hands on deck to get the reception and restaurant ready for their press party in three days' time. But there's some bad news for Leffy. Her recently revised restaurant chairs and other key items won't be ready in time from the manufacturers. No, no. You can't have something on standby when you're dealing with business. You've got to order something and have it in your possession when you've got such a tight schedule. It's so unprofessional. It is so unprofessional. Now, I don't have chairs, do I? I won't have chairs now for Thursday because I, I can't keep putting things back. So if we don't have what we need 
what we've anticipated no, all I, of us I... where we are by Thursday. No. If we don't have that, then things will slow down between us. In fact, forget slow down. I'm just being polite to you because I don't want to come across as threatening. Things will stop between us and then there'll be a different course. I don't want to go there with you. I will sue you for breach of contract. I will sue you for breach of contract, not just for the items that we have not had delivered, but I will sue you for the time that the hotel should have opened and all the loss of income. Now, that's something I do every day of my life, and I don't have a problem with it because it's an environment that I'm used to, and it's what I do every day. But it's costly, and it's a big headache. I think he's understood. I think this is a man that has completely lost um, his business. D-Day is Thursday. If he delivers chairs on Thursday, what we want, it's fine. If he doesn't, then it's not fine. It's that simple. No, no, it's, that's it. That's it now. After being let down by the manufacturers, they decide to cancel the press party. Is this the final straw for Franco and Leffy? It's now October and I'm back for my final visit to Franco and Leffy's hotel. Whilst it's fantastic that they've got this huge, great hotel sign which shows up for miles, there's a whole load of builders' materials outside the front door too, which shows they're still far from being open. Franco and Leffy have worked on the project for nine months and have given the tired brick facade a facelift. With smart new black window frames and iconic signage. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Nice to see you, how and are you? you too. So what's going on? We're not open? No, we're not open, no. Yeah. It has been there uh, some problematic months since we saw you last. Well, I have to say, if nothing else, that hotel sign is brilliant. You can see it for miles. It's really, really good. Although the interiors aren't yet finished, Franco and Leffy are keen to show Ruth some of their design choices for reception. It's a far cry from the original look of the insurance office block. Gosh, lots of things. And it now becomes very plain how difficult the actual architecture was because yeah. you have achieved what you wanted very well, which is this big entrance here. Yeah. And the buildings now connect. Yes. And that was the big problem, that wasn't was the, it? That, that was the biggest design problem that I and had. expensive yeah. problem. Very expensive, too. yes. doing on money as things stand at the moment I'm 1.6 million over budget <laughs> yeah thank you I think my desire to be to be even more design led and boutique I have to I think it got a, a bit carried away if you ever do this again just always say to yourself and particularly say to Leffy it's a lesson I've had to learn Am I going to make more money if I have that instead yes. of that? And I'm telling you here and now, not one single customer will come here no. because you've got more expensive tasks no. on the floor. Agreed, agreed. Leffy's stern phone call to the manufacturers proved fruitful. Her chairs arrived and she's pleased with the result. She hopes to continue working with the supplier to get the interiors finished. But it's the nearly completed bedroom which she's eager to show Ruth. So this is one of our bedrooms and it's connected to a suite. I like this fabric very much. You will know because red is not your already, colour. Yeah, well, it's the, how much red? <laughs> <laughs> I do find the, the decor, it, yeah, I have to be honest, it's not my taste, Leffy. I did think, I have to say, down in the lounge area, bar area, um, I really think that those curtains could be revisited. I what's think the, they just look what? inappropriate for that kind of space and those kind of windows. How have you felt about being decorated? Is it something you've enjoyed? When you're under pressure and you've got a deadline and you're looking at cost, it's not quite as fun as what you thought it would be. I wouldn't dream of being a barrister without having proper training. And I would question whether you should have actually taken that job on because I think you've actually caused yourself more problems than you need mm. by doing that. But I, yeah. I, I, I hear what you say, but I absolutely love that downstairs, yeah. and I would like to give that to oh. our customers. I think if there's one lesson to be learnt from this, it's that decorating your own house is a very different thing from designing a hotel. They may have come a long way, but the other 67 bedrooms are still far from ready. 
but Franco insists he will be open fully in two months' time. In terms of cash flow, it's really important that you do open. Yes. Is it? Is. it? I it mean, is. you Absolutely. need to have money. Well, I mean, what really you, may I just to. ask, what are you actually living off at the moment? If it wasn't for Leffy's cases and, and, and some of her income and her giving me my petrol money to come to Luton every day, literally, um, it's and been a tough year. And your sandwich money as well. And, and my sandwich money but on occasion. But look at what you've created. Yeah, I couldn't so, have created so, yeah. the construction yeah, so, but on yes, this building. Yes, it, 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 it has been and it is very, very tight. It's a team effort. Mm. The one thing that I have no doubts about is you two work completely in unison. I mean, that's lovely to see uh, and unusual, I have to say. Yeah. Leffy, how do you think Franco's going to do as a hotelier? I think he's going to be fantastic. Do you think he's tough enough? No. I think... No, the, well, the I'm truth not. is, n I don't think he's that's hard why, enough. That's why Leffy's here. Who's going to provide the, the, the tough bit? I am. So the last question is actually addressed to myself, and that is, do I think you will make good hoteliers? And what I would say to that is, I have never wanted any couple to be good hoteliers as much as I want you to be. Thank you. Whether I think you will, I've got that slight caveat about your operational naivety, because that is the only thing that will stand in the way. It won't be your generosity, your kindness, your welcoming spirit, none of those things. You have those in spades. I really want you to make this work. I think Luton needs this hotel. I think you've done a terribly brave thing. And, you know, you have pretty much pulled it off. We're not quite there yet, but you're certainly on the road to doing so. Next 12 months, uh, excited and uh, full of energy. It. Looking yeah. forward to it. Definitely. Franco and Leffy have invested so much in this project, both financially and emotionally, and they can now see the finishing line. Unfortunately, that's the part where being a hotelier starts, and I hope that they can brush up on the necessary skills quickly enough in order for this to be the success that they so very much deserve. <laughs>